Masechet Nazir, Daf Yud Gimel. We have three Mishnayot today, each of them interesting cases. Mazgulo et hakos ve'amad. Had any Nazir mimenu, had Nazir. You have some people sitting around and they're drinking wine and someone is poured wine in front of him and he said, I am a Nazir from this cup of wine. That person is a Nazir. Um, okay, I mean, it's kind of obvious. There's wine there. If he said, had any Nazir or had any Nazir miyayin, he would be a Nazir. And so, in this case, too, um, there is wine poured. So, it's evident that he wants to stay away from wine and he is a Nazir. And now we have a story. But strangely, the story actually has a different conclusion than the halacha we just said. In this story, there is some woman who was already drunk. And then someone pours her yet another drink. Because that's what, that's, uh, it's fun to do that. It's fun to take a, a, a drunk person and have them drink even more. Um, but the, this woman did not want to get any more drunk and did not want to drink it. And therefore, uh, she said, I am in, uh, I am in Nizira from, uh, from it, from this cup. Now, based on the halakha that we just saw, someone is, is poured a, a cup of wine and he said, menu, then that person is a Nazir. But in this story, uh, the rabbis looked into it and they said, she did not intend to actually make herself a, a Nazira. Rather, what she intended to say is, this cup is prohibited to me like a korban. She just wanted to refuse that cup. She just didn't want people to be pressuring her to drink anymore, even though it was good entertainment for them. Uh, but she didn't want it. And so she used strong language to say, I am prohibited. But she didn't actually mean that she wants to be a nizira for the next 30 days. She meant that I am separating it is prohibited to me. Okay, so the Gemara is going to ask about the structure of this Mishnah. Ma'aseh listod. Why would you bring a halacha that says, if you, in this case, you poured a cup of wine, you are a Nazir, and then you bring a story in which the sages rule that she is not a Nazira. And we're uh, explaining the question. In the beginning, we say um, that the person is a Nazir if they say, I'm going to uh, be a Nazir from this cup. And then in the story about this woman, um, we see that in this cup is a prohibition, but other wine is fine. In other words, when she says the way the rabbis interpreted her words, is that um, she said, this cup is prohibited to me because she doesn't want to drink this cup of wine. But um, a, a, another cup tomorrow, if she wants to drink more wine, she is permitted. It's only that particular cup. I am a Nazir from it. That's a very limited local prohibition. And so that's different from her making herself a Nazir, in which case she would be prohibited from all wine. So how can we explain the structure of this Mishnah? And the answer is Hasure me hasera vahikatane. Mazgulo atakos veamar. Hadeni nazimi menu, hareze nazir. Veim shikorhu veamar hadeni nazimi menu, eno nazir. Maitama, keman damar hare alai korban hu. This Mishnah is missing words. It's missing a clause. And this is how you should uh, um, recite the Mishnah. If a person is, uh, has a cup of wine poured for him and he says, I'm going to be a Nazir from it, then it means he wants to be a Nazir. That's the usual law in a general context. However, if from the specifics of the context, it's evident that the person doesn't want to be, be a Nazir, but they just want to not drink any more wine right now, for example, if the person is intox already intoxicated and they pr pr pe his, his friends are pressuring him to drink more wine and he says, no, I'm going to be a Nazir from it, that's not a Nazir. Why? Because it's, a, it's the same as saying that this is prohibited to me. And if you say, well, he should say that. If you, if you meant, I don't want to have this cup of wine, just say, this cup of wine is prohibited to me. Why say a uh, language of a Nazir if you don't mean that you want to be a Nazir, right? If you say, had any Nazir menu, certainly sounds like you're going to be a Nazir. So why wouldn't the person say what he meant? 
סבל מייטין לי אחרינה ומסערן לי. אמה להו המילתה דפסיקה להו ומעשה נמי באישה אחת. Because a person is thinking, I know my friends, they're going to bring me another cup. And then another cup, and I can't get them away. They're going to keep aggravating me, bothering me, pressuring me to drink more than I want to. And so if I say any, anything else, no, I don't want it. They're going to keep pressuring me. I'm going to say something that will make a definitive stop. That will certainly keep them away. That's why he uses elevated language, exaggerated language. I'm a nazir from it. Once he says that, his friends understand that he means it. And they're not going to pressure him and offer him uh, uh, more wine, uh, that, at least not that night. And, in fact, there was such a story about such a woman who was, in, in fact, in exactly that circumstance. And uh, she said that, and therefore that was the law. Okay, so once we fill in those words, uh, then it's not a, a story that's contradicting. Uh, it is giving an exception to the general law. But the, as in all vows, we go by a person's uh, intent. And a person's intent, even with the same exact words, um, can be different depending on the circumstances. Okay, it's interesting to hear, to wonder, when it says, Chasurim uh, is the Mishnah actually missing words? Um, or is it just here an explanation? And, uh, you know, sometimes it's one and sometimes it's the other. Uh, interestingly here, the, 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 the language of the Mishnah that we have, Harezen Azir, that's the language we have. And then it continues, and, uh, and if he shikor, Enon Nazir. And you notice that the word Nazir and the word Nazir and both of the phrases, the one that we have and then the one that we don't have. And uh, there, it, it's possible that what happened here is that the original Mishnah, let's say the, Mishnah, the original Mishnah is this full one, um, had all these words. What happens sometimes, both in writing and, when, and in memorizing, is that uh, some, uh, a person's mind skips from one word to the next word when they are exactly the same. This could happen in writing, like if you write one word, Nazir, and I copy it, then I look back and I jump down to the next one. It can happen orally also, as sometimes happens if you're saying Shema, and then, um, if you're not paying attention, you can skip to the second one um, and skip most of the second paragraph without realizing. Um, so this is a common error. It's called in Hebrew or in the Latin phrases, homo yo telutan. Repeat that a few times. It means same ending. Homo same. Telut, uh, telos means ending. And when you have the same ending of two sentences or two paragraphs, uh, sometimes one skips from one to the next. So um, it's possible anyway uh, that this is what happened here. Um, or it could just be that the story is giving an exception and you're supposed to understand that the story is an exception and they were just filling in that the story is implying that if it's a, such a circumstance, then that is the law. Okay, either way, that's very interesting, um, uh, a very interesting case. Um, uh, the halakha here is also interesting, uh, that um, if a person um, is, has, is depressed or a mourner, and his friends are persuading him to drink, and he says, says I'm a nazir, and I want to abstain, right? So there's another halakha in Rambam. So this is a similar case, not when a person's drunk, but rather a person is depressed and his friends are trying to pressure him to drink so that he'll, 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 uh, he'll uh, feel better and a person doesn't want to. And they keep pressuring him, I'm a nazir. And again, that's a similar circumstance where even though they're not drunk, but for another reason, let's say they're in mourning, they don't want to be cheered up right now. They want to feel depressed. And so to get their friends uh, to stop badgering, they'll say this exaggerated language and they're also... A person is not a nazir, they just can't drink that particular cup of wine. All right, next Mishnah. Hareni nazir amanat sheheh shote yayin umit tameh lametim hareze nazir ve'asur bekulan. A person says, I will be a nazir on condition that I can drink wine and I also can uh, become tame uh, tame lamet. So the only thing left is uh, growing his hair. Uh, so does that work? The answer is no. His condition does not work, but he is a nazir. So he is a nazir in all, and he is prohibited in all things. In other words, we ignore his condition. The Gemara will explain that if, if you try, try to make a condition against the Torah, then the condition is null and void. Even though the conditional part is null and void, the vow itself is valid. 
um, at least according to Tanakhama here, and uh, therefore he is a Nazir. Second case, Person says, I know the laws of Nazirut. I learned Daf Yomi. I know what the Nazir is prohibited from all three. Uh, 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 that, I, I know that there is a Nazirut. I know that the, there's a prohibition against two, rather. But I never learned the, uh, that a Nazir is prohibited in wine. I didn't get up to that page. Um, I, was, I missed that day in school. So then he says, so I, I made himself, he says, I, I, I had any Nazir. And afterwards he explains, listen, I, I was ignorant. I didn't know about the wine prohibition. I only knew about the hair and the being metameh lamet. What's the law in that case? Also, he is a Nazir and he's prohibited in wine also. Um, so the first case is where he makes a condition not to do one of the things or two of the things. And here it's out of ignorance. Same law, he is, he is a Nazir and prohibited from all, all prohibitions. However, here, V'debihu Shim'on, Matir Debi Shim'on permits, he permits him altogether. In other words, he is not a Nazir. According to Debi Shim'on, you can only, you only, a Nazirut only takes effect if you fully embrace the entire thing. Uh, so uh, since he, he ha didn't have in mind the wine because he didn't know about it, so it's out. Now, a question that the Gemara is going to deal with is, what does Rabbi Shimon think about the first case? of a condition. When it says it biudamatir, is he arguing with Tanakama in both cases, or does he agree with Tanakama in the first case? Because it doesn't say after this one it'd be Shimon Matir and after this one it'd be Shimon Matir. So it's really ambiguous what he says about the first. Um I mean uh, okay so Gamana we'll we'll see that we'll we'll uh, discuss. Now third case Yodea Anisha Nazir Asur Beyain, Aval Savur Hayite Shachami Matirin Li, Mipineshen Ani Yahol Echiot Ela Beyain, O Mipineshani Kobeda Tametim, Areze Mutar, Vedebishimon Oser. The third case is I know the laws of Nizirut and I know it's prohibited in wine. However, when I made a vow, had any Nazir, I thought that I can have a, a good excuse, um, that the rabbis would permit me uh, to drink wine because I can't, I can't live without wine. Um, I need it to live. You have to remember in, old, in olden days, they would be drinking wine regularly mixed in with their water. The alcohol in the wine would kill the germs in the water. Uh, so this was uh, just a regular drink or whatever. Maybe the person for whatever reason, uh, health reason or mental reason, needs wine. Okay, so he said, I, I did take a vow of Nizirut, but I figured the rabbis will allow it. Or um, he is an undertaker, and therefore he says, I know I took upon myself Nizirut, but I assume that uh, if I went to the rabbis, they would say, oh, you're a grave digger. Well, you're going to be tamet all, tamet lamet all the time. Oh, you, okay, fine. You don't have to be. Uh, you can be a Nazir, and you can be tamet lamet. I thought that the rabbis would permit me an exception. Um, now this is incorrect. The rabbis would not permit such an exception. So what is the law if he ta if he takes a vow, having in mind that he would be get an exception? In this case, the opinions are switched. Tanakama says Hareze Mutar, meaning he's not a Nazir at all. And the Bishimon says he is a full Nazir and is prohibited in all of them. Now this is very strange why the Mishnah or the opinion switched. Uh, from before, before Tanakama said uh, Asur and Rabbi Shimon said Matir, uh, we would expect it to follow the same pattern, and here it doesn't. Uh, Gemara will discuss that as well. All right. Uh, notice in the, in the Mishnah, you never have a case where a Nazir is only prohibited in one or two, but prohibited in the other thing. It's an all or nothing situation. The question is just, is it all or is it nothing? Now, Veliflog Namer de Bishimon Beresha. And so now we ask, how come the Bishimon argues only in the second case, but not in the first case of the Mishnah? Amar de Biosho ben Nevi, Halukaya de Bishimon af Beresha. The Biosho ben Nevi says, in fact, the Bishimon disagrees in the Resha also. It's the same thing, it's the same principle. In order to decide, in order to become a Nazir, a person has to take upon himself all of the prohibitions of Nezirut. He can't have in mind any exceptions. And therefore, whether he makes a condition, uh, uh, I'm a condition, on condition, I only take two out of the three, or out of ignorance, either way, he not, does not have in mind to accept all of the uh, contents of Nezirut. 
Now, the person doesn't always have to say all the contents. It just says, Hareni Nazir, Stam. Or it says, Hareni Nazir, Miyayin. But we understand that he means by that all the conditions. But if he says, or, the, or, or has in mind, or doesn't know um, what, uh, 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 one of the prohibitions, then, according to the Bishimon, he's out. He, he's, he's not a Nazir. Um, and so, therefore, that would be consistent. That's Rabbi Yosho ben Levi's interpretation. Ravina Amar, Beresha la Palig, Rabbi Shimon. Ravina thinks that Rabbi Shimon disagrees in the second case, but agrees in the first case regarding a condition. Maitama, Bishum Dava Lemat, Nea Mashe Katuba Torah, Vecholamat, Nea Mashe Katuba Torah, Tena O Batel, because we have a general rule, and Rabbi Shimon agrees with this rule that anyone who makes a condition, that's against what's written in the Torah. Uh, it is a condition against what's written in the Torah. The Torah gives you a definition of a Nazir, and you're trying to redefine a word. You can't. You can't redefine a word in a dictionary on your own, and you can't redefine the details of a law in the Torah. So anyone who tries to uh, make a condition that's against, what, against the Torah, the condition falls away, and the vow remains. So we ignore the condition, and the vow remains. That is true in the first case, we ignore the condition and the vow remains, and that's considered a full acceptance because it's as if you didn't say a condition. Whereas in the second case, where it's out of ignorance, and the person just never knew that a Nazir is prohibited from wine. In that case, we recognize that ignorance, and that ignorance means, since you didn't fully accept the, all the details of Nazir, then that's called zero, according to the Bishimon, and that's why he's not a Nazir. They are different cases. That explains Ravina. Now, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Amar Lach, Amenat Kehustameh. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi interprets the, the Amenat, the condition in the first case, not as a condition. If it were a condition, then it would in fact be subject to this law that we ignore the condition that's against the Torah, and therefore he is a Nazir. But we don't parse it as a condition. We say what he meant is, Chutz, uh, except for. Uh, what he actually, um, uh, we understand his meaning, his meaning as, I am a Nazir, except for the prohibition of wine and becoming tame lamet, um, uh, the, both of these, or one or, or or one or the other. Since he says I'm a nazir, except for uh, drinking wine, therefore he did not fully accept upon himself the uh, the prohibition, and therefore to be Shimon, according to Yosha ben Levi, disagrees in both the first and the second. They're actually very similar in the first one. He knows that generally there is a prohibition, but he says, I accept, I accept upon myself a Nazir except for that. In the second one, he doesn't even know that, that a Nazir is prohibited against wine. It doesn't matter. In either case, because he didn't fully accept all the aspects of a Nazir, he is not a Nazir at all, and so we parse it not as a condition, but as a chutz, and now we understand their machloket. Um, uh, the Tanya Kevated Ravina, we have a Braita that explicitly supports Ravina's interpretation that Rabbi Shimon agrees uh, with the first case, with Tanakama, um, that the person is a Nazir. Uh, the Beraita reads, Someone says, I am a Nazir on condition that I'm allowed to drink wine and be tame lamet. He is a Nazir, he's prohibited in all of them. So far, that's exactly the same as the Mishnah. But this Beraita adds a reason. Because he's making a condition against the definition of the law in the Torah itself. And if you try to make a condition that changes a law that's in the Torah, we ignore the condition, and, the, and what remains is the, um, the, the vow itself. And that is the reason why it's no good. This is a statement that everyone, this is a principle that everyone agrees with, Rabbi Shimon as well. And so... If this is the reason, in other words, if we actually parse this condition as a condition, then Rabbi Shimon would agree that we ignore the if statement and the uh, vow uh, is valid. Um, uh, so that's, this supports Ravina and is uh, against the interpretation of Yosho ben Levi, who interpreted the condition as a Chutz uh, exceptional statement. All right, good. Now the last part of the Mishnah. I says I knew it was uh, I knew it was prohibited, but I assume that I'm an exception because I can't live without wine, or because I'm a grave digger. 
Okay. Hold on, this is strange. In this case, in the Mishnah, it was flipped around. The Bishimon was the one that was stringent, and the and the um, and the uh, Chachamim said he's not a Nazir. And here, it goes, it's the opposite. Uh, so, so we can have three answers to this. The first answer is, you're right. In fact, we have the wrong text of the Mishnah. And uh, it's what we should read it as. Um, Tanakama says Asur and Bishimon says it's permitted. It's like the other cases before. Where if a person uh, says, you know, I'm a uh, Nazir except for something, he's, he's prohibited from all of them. And Abishimon said he didn't fully accept upon himself all the prohibitions. He tried to make himself an exception. So therefore, he's zero. He's not a Nazir at all. And we got the Mishnah wrong. All right. That's an easy answer. Uh, it is strange how uh, the transmission, in the course of transmission, this was switched around because it doesn't really make sense. How could this switch um, have stuck? Um, if anyone reading the Mishnah sees that it's the wrong way. Um, so therefore, the next Mishnah, the next uh, answer is going to leave the Mishnah as is and give a, give a logic. Don't switch around the, the opinions. Okay, in the earlier clause, when he says, I'm a Nazir, um, but I, uh, except for wine, or I didn't know about wine, there, according to the rabbis, where even if he only made himself a Nazir in one of them, right, I'm going to be a Nazir, but only regarding wine. So then he's prohibited from, from all of them, right? We consider one to be like all. That's the main principle of the, of the rabbis, that even one is considered like all. And according to the Bishimon, he says, no, if you only make yourself prohibited to one thing, then that's like zero. You have to accept upon yourself all three prohibitions. And if you say, I'm going to be a Nazir just for wine, then it's like zero. So that's the principle in the Resha, right? The rabbis say one is like all, and the Rabbi Shimon says one is like zero. Now let's apply that to the Sefa. Sefa de Nadar Mikulahu Vichil Mehada. The Sefa, he says, I am a Nazir for all of them, right? Remember the language he said exactly. I know all the prohibitions, right? And I'm going to be a Nazir for all of them. But he then uh, took away one and said, uh, I, I'm sure the rabbis will permit me to, uh, to be Tamel Ahmed because I'm a grave digger. So here, since he um, accepted upon himself, he made a vow regarding all of them, but is requesting of a sage, hey, can you uh, take away one of them? Or he's assuming a sage will take away one of them. So now we apply the same principle. Uh, the rabbis who said in the first part that we consider one to be like all. So if he accepts one prohibition, then it's like all of them. Um, uh, or even only said one, he is a Nazir for all of them. So too, when he removes one of them, it's like he removes all, right? It's the same principle. It just depend on, depends on where you're starting from. If you start from zero and he says, I'm going to accept one, one is like all, now you have to do all of them. If you start off saying, I'm, I'm a Nazir for everything, but I'm going to subtract one. Oh, one is like all. That means you subtracted everything and you're not a Nazir. Whereas Rabbi Shimon has the opposite principle. Rabbi Shimon damar ad shiazir mikulam ki mitchil nameh mehu ad mitchil mikulahu mishum hachi katani v'Rabbi Shimon oser. According to Rabbi Shimon, he says that one or two, any part, part is like zero. That's why if he says, I accept them by myself, one prohibition or two prohibitions, that's like zero, um, uh, right? That's why he has to say, all, he has to accept all of them because part is like nothing. Therefore, also, when he accepts the part, he says, I'm a Nazir for all of them. I know about, I know it's prohibited and all that, but I want to remove one of them. Well, his Bishimon's principle is one is like zero. So if he says, I'm a Nazir, and I want to take away one, 
Well, if you take away one, you don't take away anything. And that's why he remains a full Nazir. And so that's the difference. And um, this is very interesting because it, while it looks like they're con inconsistent in the Mishnah, when we dig deep, deeper down into the principle, it makes a, a essential difference. If he's not a Nazir and the size is going to take upon himself, then you say, is one like all or is one like zero? But if he's already a Nazir, a full Nazir, and then he goes to a sage and says, oh, now can you take away one? Well, we just apply the same principle, uh, is one like all or is one like zero? All right, fascinating. And yet a third answer. The third explanation is that actually the Chachamim and the Bishimon in our Mishnah are arguing a parallel machlok to the argument of the Amoraim, Shemuel and Rav Ase, who argue in the context of of nidarim uh, that one cannot fulfill because they are out of one's control. And there's different types of nidre onasin um, that are null and void. These, they, you don't have to fulfill these vows. Um, there were four types of them that we saw in Masech and Nidarim. And so these four, uh, the rabbis permitted. One of them is Zeruzin, of exhortation. This is like if we're negotiating and you say you'll pay two. And I'm the seller and I say, I promise I will not sell this for a dollar less than four. What I really mean by that is that if you offer three, I'll, I'll accept three. And so here it's clear that the vow is not meant literally, but just a way of encouraging you to pay more. Or Havai, which is an exaggeration, I promise uh, I will take upon myself uh, not to have wine if I didn't see a snake this big, this big, the size of whatever. Um, uh, shigagot is unintentional. I make a vow if I was ever in Vegas, then I won't drink wine because I thought that I was never in Vegas. Turns out, oh, when I was a kid, my father took me to Vegas, and I forgot and didn't know about that. So there, it does not apply. Or Nidre or Nasin, beyond what I said, you know, I'll be a vow if I don't meet you in Chicago tomorrow. But then all flights are canceled, and there's no way I can get there. So that is, that's Nidre or Nasin. Regarding Nidre or Nasin, there is a machloket between Shemuel and Rav Aseh. V'amar Rav Yehuda Amar Rav Aseh. The question is, if I make such a vow, I'm going to be in Chicago tomorrow, and then all the flights are canceled. Um, is that vow automatically null and void, or do I have to go and tell a sage, listen, I made the vow, I was not able to fulfill it because of the circumstances, and the sage has to undo it for me. So Rav Aseh says, regarding these four, you have to go to a Chacham and explain to him the circumstance, and then they will undo it. It's a valid category of uh, undoing vows, but you actually have to go and, uh, and undo it. But when he said that in front of Shemuel, uh, Shemuel says, no, look at the, the Mishnah says, Hitiru Chachamim, the sages permitted. Uh, that means yeah, that they are already already uh, done. It's, it's automatically canceled. You don't have to go to a, a specific sage for that specific vow. It's canceled automatically. You don't even have to bother. Okay, so that is a machloket regarding that Mishnah. Uh, Rav Aseh says that you have to go to a sage, and Chachamim say it's automatically null and void. Ah, we can line that up with the two opinions here. Rabbanan sabre ki Shmuel Shimon ke Rav Aseh. Rabbanan and our Mishnah would agree with Shemuel. I mean, the Rabbanan are Tanaim, but they would they agree with the same view that Shemuel also eventually says, which is that the vow is dissolved automatically. And so too in our case, person says had any Nazir. Okay, he's a Nazir for everything, and then he uh, he then he recognizes or realizes um, or always assume that. Wait, I have an excuse by, uh, about because uh, I'm a grave digger, so I can become Tame Lamet. Now, this is a circumstance beyond his control. He has to become Tame Lamet because that's his uh, that's his job, and uh, therefore, 
Um, he does not, therefore, the Nizirut is null and void. You don't even have to go to a sage to annul it because this falls within the category of uh, something, a circumstances beyond one's control. That's why Rabbanan in our Mishnah says mutar. And not only is he allowed to be a, a bitame lamet, because you can't just be half a nazir. So then the whole nazir, the whole vow uh, dissolves and uh, he's no longer a nazir. Whereas Rabbi Shimon agrees with Rab Aseh that although the category of something beyond your control is a legitimate category, but you still have to go and actually dissolve it. And so this guy who made a vow, and when he made the vow, he assumed that, oh, I, I guess, uh, you know, a sage will, will un, undo it for me. But until you actually go to a sage and un, undoes it, you are a, um, you are a, a nazir. And that's what Abish Shimon thinks, that although he has a good excuse that if he goes to a sage, the sage may very well recognize it and absolve the vow. Un- but until he does so, if he just has in mind and says, I'm a Nazir, and I assume the rabbis will be okay with this. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But you still would have to go there. And before you do that, he is a Nazir. And that's what Abi Shimon in our Mishnah says, that he the Nazirut remains. He's prohibited from all of them. Uh, in other words, it happens to be that Abish Rabban and Abish Shimon um, disagree regarding this, but it has nothing to do with the first two cases. The first two cases is about when, when he accepts upon himself the Nizirut, does it even apply or not, since he only accepted part of it or was, was ignorant of part of it. In this part of the Mishnah, is, everyone agrees he became a Nazir because he said a full thing, I'm a Nazir. And this is a, this, the, the question about undoing it is related to a separate machloket, which is a general question about undoing, uh, nizir, un, undoing any vow when it's a circumstance beyond one's control. And so it just happens to be that the same, uh, uh, um, uh, the same sages, Rabbi Shimon Rabbanan, um, uh, they have a diff- have an opinion in which the conclusion is switched, but in fact it's unrelated. In the third opinion, it's unrelated to the one before. Okay, I think I like the second answer uh, the best. I think it's the, the 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 cleanest, most elegant, in that you find the basic principle, and about one it was, is part all or is part considered zero. And that applies consistently in all the cases. All right, finally, last Mishnah. Had any Nazir, ve'alai legaleach Nazir. Ve'shamach chavero ve'amar, va'ani, ve'alai, ve'alai legaleach Nazir. Okay, one person says, I'm going to be a Nazir, and I further take upon myself an obligation to shave another Nazir. That phrase, to shave a Nazir, doesn't mean physically that I'm going to be his barber, but that I am going to sponsor another Nazir. It's very expensive. You have to bring all these korbanot. I want to sponsor a Nazir. And people would often do that by sponsoring a Nazir. The sponsor actually kind of gets the credit uh, for it. So he's doing two things. He's a Ben Nazir and he's going to sponsor a Nazir. His friend hears him and says, I also, Va'ani, Nazir. I'm going to be a Nazir. That's the Va'ani. And I also want to shave a Nazir. Okay, the Gemara is going to ask a question. What if he just says Va'ani? Um, would Va'ani also, without the words Va'alai Legal Nazir, would that also imply that he is copying the whole statement of the guy he heard, or only half of it? Well, we'll get to that. Now, Im hayu pikhin, megalachin ze et ze, vim lav megalachin nazirin acherim. Now, if these two people are smart, and they want to try to save some money, they can each shave each other. In other words, A will sponsor B's korbanot, and B will sponsor A's korbanot. And that way, they're both fulfilling all the parts of their uh, of their vow. Uh, I'm a nazir, and uh, I don't, it doesn't mean I have to pay for my own, own animals. I'm going to be in the nazir, and you pay for them. And the same thing, I'll pay for yours, so you're a Nazir, and I'm also get, I also get to sponsor, and that way it costs us the same amount. Um, but if not, if they don't re- uh, think of this, uh, this uh, trick, then they are going to have to pay for their own korbanot, and they're going to have to sponsor some other Nazir, which means they'll have to pay for double the amount of korbanot. All right, a uh, nice case. Now, Ibaya Lehu, question that was asked in the Bet Midrash, Shama Chaverov Amar Va'ani. What if instead of saying this whole, I am, an, I am meaning a Nazir, and I'm going to shave a, another Nazir, what if we just said Va'ani in response to the first phrase, Mahu. Vani akule dibura mashma, o dema apalge de dibura mashma. Do we assume that Vani refers to the entire phrase? Or maybe he only meant to say ditto 
uh, to half of it. And if we can establish that he means only part of the uh, other guy, other the first phrase, is it the first half, or should we assume that it's the second half? Okay, good question, and we're going to have an answer here. Tashema vani ve'alai legalech nazir. We're quoting our very Mishnah. Uh, that's the first guy. Imayu pichim al megalechin ze et ze. I'm sorry, the second guy says, the first guy says, I'm going to be a Nazir, I'm going to be Galech. The second guy says, I also, and I'm going to shave someone. They should uh, shave each other. Now, since our Mishnah and uh, gives an ex- in the, the, main, the main example of our Mishnah is a person says, Va'ani, and he adds, Va'alai legalech Nazir. It sounds like the Va'ani part is going only on the first half of Hadani Nazir, and that's why he has to add, and I also want to shave, right? Um, so um, just from the, the, the lining, lining up the statements, Va'ani is going only on the first half. Uh, is only going on half, rather. Dibura. Uh, okay. Amri in apaged de dibura mashma. We agree. You know what? That's a good proof that the word vani is only half. That's why he has to say another half of the statement. Miu adesha o asefa. But now is our second question, follow up. Uh, does vani by itself, would that refer to the first half or to the second half? So we answer, Mina midikamar ve'alai legaleach shma mina va'ani al techirat dibura mashma. Oh, we can answer it also from the very same uh, Mishnah. Since he, the part that he added is ve'alai legaleach, and I also will shave another one, another person, it means that the word va'ani is, is going on the first half of it. So therefore, in a, a similar case as to our Mishnah, if the one person says, nazir, nazir, and the friend just says va'ani, it didn't say anything else, so we'll parse it the same way it's parsed in our, in, in our Mishnah, just without the second half. The word va'ani means he's a nazir. And if he doesn't say Allah legalech, then he doesn't have to shave. That means Vani goes on the first half of the statement that he just heard, whatever is first. Okay, good. So we um, seem to have a good proof, but we're going to challenge it. But don't worry, we're going. We are going to solve the challenge. Says, how do you know this is true? This proof. Um, and maybe um, the word va'ani actually goes on the entire phrase. And if he said the just va'ani, he would be a nazir and would have to sponsor a nazir. And if you challenge me and to say, well, look in our Mishnah, it also says the words ve'alai and it has another phrase. What does he mean by adding ve'alai legaleach? He means alai, I take upon myself that very word that I met, said when I said va'ani. In other words, according to this, the, the question of Rav Huna B'red Rav Yoshua, just saying va'ani by itself is enough of a ditto of the entire sentence before. And in our Mishnah, it's just adding for clarification. You really could just said va'ani and he would be obligated as a nazir and also to sponsor another nazir. And now we're just adding some words of clarification. Oh, also va'alai, what I just said, yeah, that's going to be upon me and I'm going to do the second part too. But really, you don't have to say it. And here is Ravuna's proof that this is added just for stylistic reasons, just for emphasis. Sefa, which means that next Mishnah that's going to coming up on tomorrow's daf, has a variation of this case. One person says, I take upon myself to shave half a nazir. What that means is he's going to sponsor half the cost. If it costs uh, $1,000 to pay for all the animals of a Nazir, he's going to sponsor $500. Now notice in this case, he's not taking upon himself to be a Nazir. He doesn't say had any Nazir and also. It's only sponsorship of half. And his friend hears that and says, Va'ani, I, or me too, uh, I take upon myself to sponsor half a Nazir. Okay, now notice there, are there two matters? 
There are not two matters there. He's only, there's only one obligation. And yet it says, Va'ani and an extra part, Alay legalech chasi nazir. Ela mai kamar alay behamilta hachaname ki kamar alay behamilta. So it's evident in the next Mishnah that all he has to say is va'ani, right? It's clear that that would be sufficient because it's only one matter. And the fact that he added alay legalech chasi nazir, he meant that same thing. The whole, the whole, what I just said in va'ani, he just added saying it again for emphasis. Since in the second, in the next Mishnah, it's the va'ani is sufficient and the rest of the alayz dat 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 is added for emphasis. So too, our Mishnah here is using the same style style format. Va'ani is sufficient to take upon himself both obligations. And the fact that it added alay dat 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 is only for stylistic parallelism to be similar to the next Mishnah. All right, this sounds like a good challenge. Amar le has an answer. Hachi hashta, wait, this and this, you can't compare these two things at all. Iyamat bishlama resha, sirichi sefa, Iyamat bishlama resha sirichi sefa la sirichi, tane sefa de la sirichi, mishum resha de sirichi. This is, listen, I agree in general that the Mishnah uses parallelism, but it only works one way, not backwards. So if you have a case where the resha needs to say something, uh, and, and it says it in a certain way because of the content, and then even though in the sefa you don't need to say it, the Mishnah often will still formulate the sefa to be parallel to the resha, um, and so you, have, so you have a nice parallelism. So if you flipped around the order, then I would agree with your argument. But, But in this case, where in the resha, you don't need to say, In the sefa, you also don't need to say, So now you're telling me that the resha has it because of the sefa. There's two problems with that. First of all, it's the wrong order, right? Um, you, you would never put something in the resha because you're going to need the, the, the parallel in the sefa. But even, let's say, you would um, make the first part, uh, formulate the first part in anticipation of being parallel to the second part. In this case, these are extra words in both parts. So it's, it can't be there just for stylistic reasons. You should leave it out. If you want them to be parallel, leave it out in both in the resha and the sefa. Just say, the second person says, va'ani. And then he takes upon himself in the first part, two obligations. In the second part, uh, that one obligation. Um, therefore, since the Mishnah doesn't do that, but it does add these extra words, so rather we're going to explain the Mishnah nicely like this. The Sefa, where it says Vani and also adds Ve'alai, and there it's not necessary at all because there's only one obligation where adding the Sefa is only for stylistic reasons and because it's copying the Resha. And the Resha, it is necessary because it does make a difference if you say just Vani or you say Vani Ve'alai da da da. If you just say Vani, then you only take upon yourself half an obligation, only the first half, and you are a Nazir. And um, and only if you say both parts, Vani and Ve'alai, then you're, um, uh, the second guy takes upon himself both obligations. And so this is a very important uh, um, uh, methodological source for the style of Mishnayot and their use of parallelism. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.